Welcome back to MSFS 2024 and for default Cirrus Vision Jet. Today we're demonstrating Cirrus Safe Return, a system that allows the airplane to autonomously navigate to and auto land safely at the nearest airport in case of emergency. We're currently cruising at 8,000 feet with autopilot and auto throttle enabled. Let's head up to the overhead panel and press that big red button. In traditional Asobo fashion, there is currently a bug with this mode. The first time you activate Safe Return, an Airport Not Found error is displayed. To rectify this, we toggle the autopilot off, then on, then press Safe Return again. After a few seconds, the Safe Return system activates and the displays change to a passenger-friendly emergency autoland mode. The system then identifies the closest airport and calculates the required lateral and vertical path. During the safe return process, important information such as destination, time and distance to go, fuel endurance and upcoming stages of flight are displayed at the top and bottom of the screens. The main portion of the left display is dedicated to situational awareness, a PFD and a map with a magenta line, and the right display alternates between safety information and an enlarged map. During safe return, the airplane not only manages the control surfaces and throttle, but also deployment of flaps and gear. All the visual information from the real safe return system is modelled here. This instruction explains how passengers can contact ATC. I believe this is the first Cirrus jet for a flight simulator with safe return included. Although there was a lure based third party add on available for X plane Cirrus jet, it didn't model the displays. Let's take a look at the map on the right side display. A dotted line shows the path we have flown in safe return mode, and the magenta line shows our flight plan to the destination airport, which is marked with a green icon. On final approach, the airplane automatically configures for landing with gear down and full flaps at approach speed. The safe return screen displays approaching runway along with an accurate ETA. In real life, the safe return system controls the airplane from activation through landing and rollout to wheel stop, so to test this simulated version, I won't touch the controls until we're stopped on the ground. Safe return doesn't use ILS for landing, approach is calculated entirely from onboard data. This allows it to touch down at the nearest safe airport regardless of the equipment installed on the ground. Just before touchdown, the airplane idles the throttle and flares. Although we landed a little to the left, the jet does attempt to steer back to the centre line as it breaks. What happens next is probably just a result of a Sobo quality, and if you're a Cirrus or Garmin employee, it might be best to look away now. Terrible rollout and ever-increasing landing ETA while we're on the ground aside, this is still the most complete implementation of safe return available for a simulator, and it does fulfill its primary purpose of returning the airplane safely to an airport. Although I let it fail the rollout for testing purposes, as sim pilots, we're all more than capable of handling rollout and breaking ourselves after touchdown. As this video is all about Cirrus safety features, let's quickly go check out the famous Cirrus airframe parachute system. Once again, we're at cruise in the Vision Jet, and once again, we're about to go press a big red button, or more accurately, pull a big red lever. As soon as CAPS is activated, the airplane idles the engines and pitches up to slow to a safe deployment speed. The chute then emerges explosively from a nose cone. And after some aerobatics, the airplane eventually settles into a wings level attitude. Notice the caps enunciators on the display. The airplane is no longer actuating control surfaces and the instability is purely due to the physics in action during this dynamic event. Vertical speed during caps descent is still in the region of 2000 feet per minute. This will wreck the airframe upon landing. Some more Asobo quality on display here, the missing nose fairing reveals some lazily implemented single-sided geometry underneath. The fuel temperature displaying as not a number also shows Asobo's determination to match the quality standards set by other sim developers, such as Dovetail Games. Pull up. 
Pull up. Pull up. Pull up. The CAPS implementation here actually does work well as we touch down safely in ah, trees. Really glitchy trees. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you found this entertaining. If you did, please drop a like. Feel free to subscribe. Take care and I'll see you next time.